Hi, I'm Sylvie from High Level Bandanas and welcome to another video. So in this video I'll be making the first part of my crocheted wedding dress. Oh my goodness, okay, hello dog. I'll be making a part of my crochet wedding dress. You'll notice this video takes place over quite a few months. I believe I started this in like, I don't know, I started it at some point at the very like start of 2023. Now it is December 26th, as you can tell from my little Christmas outfit. It is filmed entirely on my iPhone, so you're not gonna get this quality that you're getting from my DSLR camera, which I've just recently started using in more recent videos. So with that said, keep an open mind, and this is just me kind of logging where I started, how the progress was going throughout this entire year. Good ideas, all the bad ideas, um, and yeah, <laughs> this is pretty much it. So without further ado, I'm not gonna keep chatting your ear off any longer. Let's just get into this video. All right, so this is the point in my life where I decided that yes, I would record this as a video. I didn't want to for whatever reason, but as soon as I started making it and with the convincing of my future hubby, <laughs> I decided I would. I'm using a combination of these beautiful, beautiful alpaca yarns. So they're both from Concept by Katya. My first time using them. It's called the Alpaca Lace and it is super fine. This one is the color 82. Just this beautiful champagne color. I fell in love with it in the store, which is lace weight and it does call for this hook size. Not 100% sure what that means in terms of millimeters. So because it is so fine for the bodice portion, I did decide to double up. So I'm currently using two of these skeins and once this becomes a little bit tighter, I'm gonna plop this in my yarn bowl as well. I'm still using the three millimeter hook because I want the bodice to be a little bit tighter. So I'm using the same kind of specs that I did for my original sweet pea dress. I'm not really gonna go off any specific measurements or anything. I'm just copying, like I'll probably just place it against the dress because I know it fits me so well instead of doing all the measurements. If you do want to see the Sweet Pea Dress tutorial, you guys can check that out. It is on my YouTube channel, but this will have different adjustments since it is for my wedding. All right, <laughs> so it's the next day and I just kind of wanted to show the progress where I got to last night and what this texture looks like. You can't really see how shimmery this is in this lighting but it is beautiful also i'm babysitting my friend's dog i don't know if you guys saw the sweet pea dress video but in part one or maybe the start of part two i had to cut my crochet which is something i really don't want to do with this very nice very expensive yarn mind you the yarn i used for the sweet pea dress the green one that i make in that video was also very expensive because it was hand dyed cotton we're just not going to talk about it. Uh, I went ahead and just made this panel smaller, knowing that I would need a little bit of increases. It fits like this, which is almost at the height I want. So I think I'm going to do two more rows of increasing, which will be just fine. And then I'll start the front portion. With that said, at this point, it is August 1st of 2023 and my wedding is September of 2024. So I have one year to make this. I don't know why I'm rushing through it. Not that I'm rushing, but when I have an idea in mind, it just kind of needs to be executed. The skirt and lace weight will take a while, so better to start early than never, right? I am out in the sun right now, and I just kind of wanted to show how much this shimmers. <laughs> it's insane and really confirms the decision that I made with this yarn. It is August 5th now. I do love the texture, as you can sort of see and it is very shiny so i do love that and i think it's time for me to start decreasing if i put this corner where i want it to go which is here the other corner oh no is not in the same spot you know what maybe i'll add two more rows actually i added the two more rows so it hits like this is where the increase part goes up to and i made sure that it hits on the same spot on the other side so it's where my shoulder basically ends and that's where my sleeves are going to attach. And then I'm also going to now be decreasing. So the same amount of times that I have increased for this portion, I'm going to do for this side and that way everything's going to be nice and even. August 7th, August long weekend, which means absolutely nothing to me. 
but I finally finished this top portion so I'm gonna try it on and see what it kind of looks like. So this is it without the lining and it will be perfectly open in the back where I need it to be. This is such an awkward angle. Um, I think that before I move on I'm definitely going to add a lining to it because this is definitely a little bit too see-through <laughs> so I'm gonna see if I can go to fabric land at some point to get this to work but the sizing is perfect. If you've seen this wee dress tutorial, you've kind of seen how to make these sleeves. And I do plan to make these different. I want a long sleeve and I want it to be puffy. So actually kind of like this, but see-through. So with the white that I bought, I'm not gonna double up and I'm still gonna use the same size hook. What I think I wanna do is instead of doing the increases to make a really puffy sleeve, I would like to from here, create one tie at the front and one tie at the back, and then those will meet at the top, and I'll tighten it from there, and then when I make the sleeve, I'll crochet over it. I've attached the first strap. It's just gonna be at the peaks here, and then I'm about to put a second one right there. So this is 101 chains for 100 slip stitches. I got Riley to tie this and it does tie, so I do think that the length is just fine. 101 chains in the front and 121 chains in the back. So I went to Fabricland because I wanted to add a lining and I didn't want to cheap out since this is my wedding dress. So I got a satin lining. It was on sale, which is great. So this is for the white of the skirt. And then I also got this beautiful champagne color, which is honestly a perfect match. So I am extremely happy about that. One thing about Fabricland too, if you've got the membership card, like these were supposed to be $30 a meter, the satin. And I, with the membership card, got it for 50% off. A meter was only $15, which is great. And that's all I got for the skirt lining. And I got half a meter for the top lining, which is way too much. I could line it twice, but that's the whole point. I also ended up getting a ribbon and some boning. So I do think I'm going to bone this. I don't really know how I'm going to do the lining yet, but we're going to figure that out. For the lining, something else that's a little bit confusing is that crochet and yarn obviously stretches a lot so when you do this when you put it on it really is nice and form-fitting i don't need to put darts in there or anything because it is a corset but also it tightens whereas as soon as i put this in here which doesn't nearly have as much stretch or really any stretch it's gonna kind of ruin that look i'm going to make two lining pieces and that's where I'm going to put the boning channels and then I'm going to sew them directly onto the back of my crocheted bodice that won't really show through if that makes any sense and I just realized now that I forgot to pick up champagne colored thread. Is this perfect? No but is it perfect for what I need? Honestly yes. So what I'm going to do is iron this so that it's flat and then I will sew it on. I added in some boning channels they're not perfect. I did pin it and I thought I was going to go ahead and sew but I'm just now realizing that it's not like making a dress by sewing so I kind of want to cut this to the size that I need, flip it inside out, sew the insides together so that there's no seam and that I can just top stitch it down like I'm gonna do with the top portion here. I 100 million thousand percent forgot that I couldn't flip it inside out anymore because of these stitches. So I'm just going to put some bias tape on the ends to clean up the edge. I also found this teeny tiny <laughs> thread um, spool, I guess that does match the color pretty perfectly. I'll use it as the thread that shows on the front. And I do have my machine tension pretty low and then I have a long thread length because I'm sewing through quite thick, especially sewing through this bit here. I didn't want to put more boning, so I just folded this over so that it was thicker. This is so scary. Just don't want the teeth to mess up my yarn. So far, so good, just a little bit scary. This isn't all messed up. Great, that was one of the scariest things that I have ever done, but it is sewn on there. There you go, you can not really even tell where I put anything. The thread is the same color and it really didn't ruin the yarn. I left the bottom because I still need to start the skirt. So that needed to still be open. Tried it on and it's kind of what I thought would happen. So because the lining doesn't stretch as much, 
now like the lining tightens but the crochet over top does not so i'm debating whether i want to sew the crochet on or if i want to just undo the stitches that are on the side which is what i might do i'm gonna try that first and if it works perfect if it doesn't then yeah i'll have to figure something else out feels like i've spent a million years working on this right now here's what we got so if i pull it to either side oh it's kind of working riley when you have time can you help it's taking shape i did end up sewing down the boning to this and i might add a line under the cup as well okay i'm 100 percent done sewing for today here is what the inside looks like now so this is sewn like everything that you see is sewn onto the crochet except for the cups just because i don't want a cup line but the cups are sewn just a little bit in case i hated the placement this i unsewed because the tension on it was very weird when i was pulling up on the strap so this is not sewed anymore this is not sewed anymore so i can have a little more pull i added boning here and here <laughs> and this is kind of what it looks like which honestly looks fine for now i'm gonna leave it at that it's time to start the sleeve could i start the skirt first yes absolutely but i know it's just going to take forever i'm only going to be using one skein at a time for these because i do want them to be kind of here so these ones will not be lined so the first thing that i'm gonna do i didn't do the straps on the other side that'll come after but the first thing that i'm gonna do is oops attached my yarn go all the way around the sleeve and then ignore these straps i'm gonna leave them on the outside and i'm gonna chain all the way up until the kind of like width that i want for my sleeve or the circumference that i want for my sleeve i do want them to be puffy and then once i'm done that then i'll be able to crochet over these straps and it'll make sense. This is wild. So from where I started it, so the back strap all the way up to the top strap has 40 stitches. Covering the first strap also has 50 stitches. And then covering the second strap has 60 stitches. So my sleeves are going to be a total of 150 stitches around, which is wild. And this looks like a mess right now, but we'll figure it out. It is August 10th. I'm sure you're very done with seeing this angle of me on the couch, but this is where I crochet. And here's the progress on the sleeve. So, I mean, <laughs> It's like barely there. Um, like I said, each round of the sleeve is 150 stitches. You can kind of see how big that is. Right now I have 15. <laughs> so this is 15 rows uh, or rounds of 150 stitches without even counting that first single crochet one. So that's a lot. That's a lot because it's barely even like a strap yet and I want it to be my entire arm. You can do the math on how many stitches I have Put down so far just for the one sleeve right now. I'm happy because these little straps here are working exactly in the way that I wanted them to. So as you can see, like this is already a little bit tighter. If I show you from this side, you can see that the sleeve is definitely wider than at the top portion of it. And that's because I tightened it with the strap. Guys, it is August 11th. So <laughs> just a few days later and I was able to get a couple of rows in. I think I'm over 20 at this point. It's taking a while, but it looks really nice and dainty. I do love <laughs> kind of the way it looks right now as a short sleeve. Um, and then that bow, like you can't really tell. Yeah, that's gonna be hard um, for me to show you, but the bow is kind of like on the back, which I really like, because that means that if I get a photo from the back, you'll see the bow. I'm debating whether I wanna leave it this large and puffy for the entire long sleeve. Really like the way that this is falling right now. Back to the couch view. <laughs> yeah, you're used to it. So I'm currently at row 25, just about to finish row 25. And as I said earlier, this is just huge. This sleeve is massive. I absolutely do not need a hole this big or a sleeve that is this wide. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start tapering it down. So because I have 150 stitches around, what I'm gonna do is grab an easy number that it is divisible by, which is 10. And I'm going to decrease in multiples of 10. That didn't make any sense. <laughs> but basically 150 divided by 10 is 
15. So I'll do eight half double crochets, half double crochet two together, because that works over 10 stitches. 15 times. I hope that made sense. But I'm going to do one row of that. 150 minus 15, which is 135 uh, stitches around. So we'll see how big that makes the sleeve. I might do like five more rows after that and then start uh, tapering it a little bit more. But we'll see. Small update. Wow. <laughs> this is the angle. The inside of my lining started to fray. It is a very frayable fabric. So I could just zigzag stitch the lining at the bottom of it, but I don't want to do that because I know that what I'm going to end up ultimately doing is adding the skirt in there. I figured why not just do that now? <laughs> so what you're seeing me doing right now is hemming the bottom of the silk lining for the skirt. It would probably be easier to just zigzag stitch and then make the skirt first. Just so that I have like proper measurements and stuff, but I mean like we don't do that here on this channel. I'm impatient and it's always gotta be as complicated as it can be. I'm just making basically a rectangle skirt, which I'm going to ruffle at the top. I tried making a circle skirt and I messed up so bad somehow that it is so small and tiny and it doesn't make any sense. For the time being, this will be good. I did a like triple zigzag stitch. I put it on S1 and then it will triple it. In retrospect, I probably could have used this, which is closer to a serge. But this will be nice and sturdy enough. You can really see it on here. And then I cut close to the edge because you guys can see this fabric frays like absolute crazy. Is this the neatest? No, but it is what it is right now. So here's what that looks like. Crocheted part is not attached onto anything at all, which is good because I still have to put the skirt in. I did leave quite a bit of room on the side so that I could do whatever I wanted and not worry basically. I don't know why I hemmed it. I could have just put in a zigzag stitch because uh, this is super duper long and I do want the dress to be short. Although now that I'm seeing it, I do think it looks kind of nice this way as well. So I don't know, we'll see. Oh look, it's me on the couch again. I decided that after running out of yarn on this massive gigantic sleeve that I really wanted to know what the bodice was gonna look like. And for that, I had to start the skirt. The only way I can attach it in the back is once the skirt becomes big enough that it meets in the back. If you want a better explanation of that, I really recommend watching the Sweet Pea dress tutorial video because I yeah. So with that said, once I can meet the two pieces in the back, I can add the lace up back portion and then I can actually see how the corset part will fit on me. This is taking a very, very, very long time. So I am doubling up on strands. It does feel quite thick with the double strand, way thicker than the sleeve, which is good because the sleeve will be breathable and the skirt will not be see-through. I'm not counting the amount of stitches that I have on here. It's just painful. I have been doing five half double crochet, half double crochet increase every single row. So it's a lot and it still isn't meeting in the back <laughs> so it's gonna be a lot of stitches and the thing is I want this to be extremely puffy so it's gonna be like so many more rows of increases and thus so many more rows of skirt it is August 20th and we've got this much progress on the skirt I don't know how many stitches there are around probably 200 or more and here is what the yarn looks like when it sheds on my leggings and i'm pretty sure i'm allergic but we are trudging along it's too late now i have put way too many stitches to back out this is what the two full skeins has given me in terms of length for the skirt nothing um and it's gonna be so 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 frilly and puffy which is why i'm saying i've got like a million stitches in one row but so far so good super puffy and i was able to connect the back. So the next step that I'm going to do before I keep doing my skirt is probably to do the lace up portion so that I can try it on and make sure that it fits nicely. Oh my, <laughs> this is a disaster. 
well, this is not gonna get fixed right now. It is September 1st today, which is insane to me, which means that I am a year and six days away from my wedding and I still have tons and tons and tons of time. This is me trying to change the angle from your regular couch angle, uh, even though I'm still on the couch in my pajamas. Today, right now, I think I'm gonna start doing the lace up back portion. I added my little loops on the side. So now I'm gonna just probably go and actually lace it up and see if it actually fits me. Here is the lace up, which actually looks pretty nice. And now I'm gonna try it all. Ignore um, this and my dress closet in the back. Basically, this is what it's looking like in the back. So it does lace up and it does fit. This dress is really hard to put on on my own. As you can imagine, lacing up a back on your own is really not easy. <laughs> anyway, um, and I obviously have to do the other sleeve, but the good news is that it is form fitting. The way that I did the corset actually worked and that makes me really, really, really happy. I know right now it's kind of hard to, to see, but yeah. On that note, I actually brushed my hair because I'm about to go rock climbing, hence the um, exercise outfit. But I'm gonna start the strap on the second side because just trying it on, it's kind of awkward to just like constantly hold it up with the one side. Okay, it's October 11th today. So it has been a little bit since I have touched this bit. Since I have touched this. I kind of figured I had like a year still to do this. So like, why not cool it a little bit and like work on the flowers and stuff. And now I'm realizing that this is just gonna still take forever. So I might as well just keep working on it. Does that make any sense? In that time frame, I did go pick out my wedding, wedding dress, the ceremony dress. It is extremely excellent. I cannot wait to show you guys. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. So today I'm picking up the second sleeve. I still haven't finished the first one. It's just kind of gotten here. The only thing is I forgot when I started doing the decreases. So I'm very thankful for myself for recording this because I wrote or I told you guys when I started decreasing. So I can just look at my old footage. It is November 6th. Here's Lou all cozied up. I have left the other one. I'm on my second skein of yarn now. For this one, I am just about to finish the tapering. So I am at four half double crochets and then a half double crochet decrease. And that'll be my last row of decreases to taper it. The hole is about this wide, which like, if you look comparatively to my arm, it's still huge. I still do want it to be a baggy sleeve. But long story short, I am at this much progression on the latest sleeve that I had started. It's November 11th. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have my whole length of sleeve pretty much, but now I'm making a little tie for the wrist and I'm gonna crochet over that and we'll have one sleeve done. Okay, so it is November 20th now. Um, we have our tree and this and yes, okay. So I realized last time I updated, I didn't really finish the update. So basically what I did here is the little tie I made for the wrist. I honestly think I made it too small, but we're gonna deal with that another time because I just don't care. And then I did a little scallop edging. So I'm fully done the one sleeve and now I'm gonna move on to the skirt. All right guys, that is it for part one of this video. I just feel like it's getting very long. And like I said in the intro, if you did make it all the way to here, it is now December 26th and realized how long this is gonna take me. So hopefully part two will be a little bit shorter because I'll just have one sleeve and the skirt left to do with all the embellishments. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching if you did make it all the way here and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.